Hi, I'm Joshua Farnsworth, and I'm here with George Law and David Puckett. Uh, David is a curator here at the Frontier Cultural Museum in Stanton, Virginia, and George Law is a master craftsman who volunteers here, uh, builds period furniture. So they've, they've uh, agreed to give us a tour of their shop and also a tour of a pre-Civil War cabinet maker's shop that they found and have excavated. So let's go on in and have a look and see what they've got. As you can see, it's a total mess. It's a working shop, and we didn't house clean, uh, even though we knew you were coming. And I guess that's just the way we are. We do our best work in dirt. But you can see over here, uh, it certainly has uh, some familiarity, I'm sure, to you. It's uh, what I call the Roy Underhill $25 spring pole lathe that's uh, had great use and is right now under repair because it's gotten broken a couple of times. But uh, it's, a, it's a great piece for anybody who's interested in woodworking, particularly early turning, and doesn't have a whole lot of money. So again, you can go to a Lowe's or a Home Depot and drop $25 and get yourself a pretty good sized piece of yellow pine and within it are the makings of a, of a lathe. The um, springy part of it is, uh, is a piece of ash that uh, I think was at one time destined to be a bow and arrow but it found its way into a lathe and uh, I've salvaged some um, interesting pieces here and there of lathe parts. Uh, there's an interesting uh, ram's head nut holding the uh, tool rest in place. Okay, what you're looking at is a uh, jointed chair that will go into the um, uh, Irish uh, farm complex and it's based on one that uh, came out of uh, a book on Irish traditional furniture. Uh, Ken Knorr made it. He's the gentleman standing over there in the blue hat. And this is one that, uh, the model of the one that we did is like in the 1700s. Uh, it's filled with joinery, I think, and just the one piece coming up here, you look at nine mortise and tenons, and they're all pegged with square pegs, which we made those also. We have chip carving over here on the seat. And the nails, I assume, were made by our blacksmith here, which is a and very much he's welcome with us. He makes hinges and latches. And we we had the good fortune of, of having former um, Colonial Williamsburg journeyman working here. This is a, 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 a sieve for cornmeal that will be used on the Native American uh, site. Oh, it's 1740. Yes, oh, right. 1740s, and uh, it's made of a deer rawhide that right now could pass as a drum. Look at this as a drum. Yeah. Look at that. I straightened it out. It's got a uh, an ash frame that's lashed together with deer rawhide. Uh, unfortunately, I, I, the deer rawhide had a little hole, so I did a little patchwork with with rawhide, deer rawhide. Uh, lashed it uh, to the frame with some some holes and then uh, did a circular wrap of deer rawhide. And of course, the beauty of the rawhide is as it dries, it shrinks. George does extensive research, uh, like on the bows and arrows, and everything's absolutely authentic. Uh, and he just does an incredible job for the museum, made atlatls, and just a number of different things for the uh, Native American farm. The finish that we have used on this piece, that Ken has used on this piece that he's made, and, and a finish that we use on many, many of the pieces here is, a, is an old recipe of uh, equal parts linseed oil and turpentine mixed in with melted beeswax. Uh, one of the mistakes people make, and I've made it so I can speak of, uh, about it, and that is uh, heating <laughs> linseed oil, which is not a very good idea. 
So you want to mix those two together and uh, not heat them and, and mix them in with the beeswax in, in, that, in that order. What kind of proportion of beeswax do you add? Uh, I think we... It's <laughs> less than a third. Yeah, it's probably less than a third, but equal amounts of linseed oil and, and, and uh, boiled linseed oil and turpentine. But it, it, it has a mellowness about it. Uh, we can go back, obviously, and refresh the finish. Yes, I'm aware that linseed oil is light sensitive and these pieces will darken, but when they're put into a room with other pieces, particularly antique pieces, they, they seem to fit better uh, finish-wise than uh, a lacquer or a shellac. How do you uh, how do you apply it? Do you have do you have some Very prepared? And that's that's right. that's the other advantage of it. Yeah, we well, can take a brush and brush it on, or dip a rag into it, and uh, you know work it in and, and buff it. Uh, you can go back with a buffing tool if you want to, and that'll bring out uh, um, some of the highlights. Well, See, that day with my that, that is uh, coming up nicely. One of the things that we do is after we've made the mixture, we often just put it out in sunlight and let it melt, as opposed to putting it on a burner or something. Yeah, you have normally a separation of the beeswax from the other elements. And it, I think in some cases it's because we haven't used pure beeswax. When we've used pure beeswax, we tend to have something that seems to mix, mix well together. But it, it tends to gel, and on a warm day, we'll just set it outside, and in a matter of a half hour or so, it will, it will uh, loosen up, and, and you can stir it and apply it. It's kind of as more of a liquid than as a paste as you're seeing in yeah. the container. Well, of course, the frequent question we ask is, how, to, how did you learn to do woodworking? Uh, keep in mind that, that both Ken and myself uh, came out of the working world, uh, in effect, with desk jockeys. And uh, so it's people like Roy Underhill that were an inspiration to us. Uh, I have all of his books and uh, certainly have watched his, his program uh, over the years and really have walked away with a lot of good information. And aside from that, you know, uh, watching woodworkers has been uh, enabling. Building a uh, woodworking uh, library has been very beneficial. Uh, one of the early books that I acquired that was extremely beneficial in building the tool collection was uh, the book with Hammer in Hand, which is uh, a study, uh, a museum study of the uh, tool shop of the Domini family up on, on Long Island, a three, three generation uh, family of cabinet makers windmill makers uh, and watch repair people and really superb all around Christmas.